Investment is the commonly used terminology in finance and real estate. Basically, an investment is the saving done by the people for their future use. This is to be made by every individual to lead a happy life without making any debts for their future needs. Many experts say that you need to save money and spend what is left after saving. This is a thumb rule that everyone has to embrace to lead a comfortable and rich life that they desired. There are different definitions for investment in different industry. Let us discuss what investment is in finance. Basically, an investment is a per unit production of products which are not used now but will be definitely used in the future for further production. For instance, investment has both volatile and non-volatile goods. Ideally, volatile is nothing but building a factory and non-volatile is six or a year job training. Moreover, the definition of investment in real estate is that the person invests money in buying a property either for renting or residing. Basically, commercial realtors will rent the space board whereas the residents will dwell in the board house. We will be discussing about the types of investment in which people exhibit interest in investing, introduction to investment theory, various theories of investment including controversial theory are discussed in detail. Different types of investment Investment is the common word that is heard everywhere. Without investment, people cannot grow their money. By investing in the right place helps people to reap huge profits and become a billionaire. But one has to know where to invest. It is important for people who are ready to invest to do a thorough research for a gamut of investment options. Basically, investing in the area where the concerned person has ample knowledge will definitely help him or her to earn a whopping amount in a short time span. Many people who hear the word investment will just envision about stocks and commodities. Basically, a few people invest in education, a few in buying cars, few in buying properties and while a few in electronic gadgets or jewellery. Here, the different types of investment are discussed in detail and people who have a doubt of what is an investment area and what is not will be clarified after going through this section. As per the dictionary definition, investment is something where the assets are bought for money and are sold at a high price to reap profit in the future. Basically, an investment is categorized into the following types. Ownership investments This is the common type of investment that pops up in everyone's mind when they think about investment. Basically, this kind of investment is volatile and is profitable for the people. Here are a few examples of ownership investments. Stocks Stocks are the papers which stand as a concrete proof that you own a small portion of the company. People who trade currencies and securities are categorized as ownership investment, though all the stocks that you own may be contracted. When you buy stocks in the company, you possess a share in the company and have right to take an informed decision about the company welfare. Basically, the profit that you get totally depends on the market value of the asset you own. For instance, if you own shares in a big company and the shares of that company are on rise, then the other people show interest in buying the shares in the same company. In case, if you sell the share you have with you to these people for a whopping amount, then you can reap huge profits like never before. Business This is commonly done by many people. When you plan to start a business, you first need to invest in it and run the business successfully to reap profits. Undeniably, entrepreneurship is the biggest investment and an uphill task that requires more than money. However, if the business runs successfully, you can get a whopping return. First, the entrepreneur has to build a product to provide a service and offer it to the target audience to get returns. In fact, this business can help people to become the richest individuals in the world. Real Estate This is a wise and smart investment that many people evince interest in. People can either buy land, apartments or bungalows either to stay or to rent. It is important for the people to buy the properties in the place where real estate booms on the rise. However, you need to buy a home in a sophisticated neighborhood as it is the basic need without concerning about profits. 
instead of buying home as a primary investment, you should buy for it to fulfill your basic needs. Valuable things Gold is the precious thing in which you need to invest, and you need to sell it at a higher rate when the gold rate increases. Basically, many people consider gold and other precious metals as the last investment option since alike to that of a house, the precious metals also deprecate and require high storage expenses which totally reduce the profits. Lending Investments These are alike to that of banks but are considered to be less risky over the ownership investment but the returns you reap on this kind of investment is pretty less over the ownership investment. You can buy a bond from the company for a certain amount and for a certain duration, so during this time, if the share of the company increases, then you reap huge profits and if the company is at loss, then you would be at a huge loss. However, in case of bankruptcy or loss, the bondholders will get the amount back, but not the stockholders. Savings account Though you do not invest anywhere, but if you have a savings account, still you are considered as an investor. Here you are actually keeping your money in your account and lending it to banks, thus getting the return in the form of a loan. Keeping money in the savings account helps you get the loans with ease and settle down your unforeseen financial expenses. This is not at all risky and is considered to be highly safe. Bonds. These are often considered by the corporations. There are different types of bonds and each has its own risk and return. However, this bond helps the investor to reap little returns with little risk compared to the ownership investment. Cash equivalents. These are the best investment over the other two investments discussed above. Here, investors can convert the bought investment into cash with ease. Money market funds When you invest in these money market funds, then the returns you reap is very little and the risk is also minuscule. These are considered to be more liquid and alike to that of checking account, you can also write the amount on the checks and give to the people. Other investments In addition to the assets and stocks, the other thing that fall in investment is education. Though this is an investment, but this may not help people to earn a huge income in the future. You can sell your education by starting a tutorial or a college alike to that of ownership investment and earn money. Technically, it is not an investment, but practically, it is an investment. Indeed, investing in any object that makes your lives productive is considered to be an investment. Which items do not fall into the investment? The things such as cars, electronic gadgets and other things that have high deprecation value over time do not fall under investment category. These are just luxurious things to lead a life, but are not at all an investment piece. What is an investment theory? An investment theory is basically a crucial concept where many factors are indulged in the process of investment in any property or asset. Ideally, this theory tells about the various factors that actually helps you to find the best investment area based on your investment goal and purpose. To better understand the investment theory, there are many theories which are being proposed by the economists. However, to make the investment theory understood by any individual with ease, the economists have divided this theory into four different areas which are quite easy to assimilate by all. The first factor is to set goals for the investment portfolio. Basically, the investor has to invest in different areas, since if he incurs a huge loss in one area, he can cover it up by the profits in the other investment area. To be precise, when there is a downturn in one investment asset, the profits in other investment assets will help him to keep running the business smoothly. There is a modern portfolio theory that has to be embraced by the investor in his investment process to ensure that his or her goals of investment are met by investing in certain areas. The other crucial factor of investment theory is to evaluate the investment based on the risk factor and the returns earned. There are ample options that are available to the investor to invest in the area where the risk factor is low and returns are high. 
the capital asset pricing model determines whether or not the investor makes an ideal choice in their investment portfolio. Moreover, there is another pricing model called arbitrage pricing model, which actually says the risk of an investment option that is chosen by the investor and helps him decide whether or not he or she has chosen the right investment option as per their financial goal. Basically, the best investment theory has a treasure trove of information about various investment options, the risk factors, the market conditions of those investment options, and the markets where these investment areas are traded. The efficient market hypothesis is the concept that has all the relevant information about making an informed decision of buying and selling an asset. And it is vital for the investor to have all the information about the market conditions to help him or her make a right decision after understanding the market thoroughly. Leave the past, but it is important for an investor to analyze the current market condition and future risks associated with the investment option prior to making a smart choice of investing in that particular area. And the investor has to make sure whether the current market efficient would exist in the near future while selling the assets prior to investing in them. Unarguably, investment theory is all about making the right investment decisions by the investors. By taking the aim and goal of an investor, it is quite easy for an investor to invest in the portfolio that helps them to meet their financial goals. So, prior to choosing an investment option, it is important for an investor to know the head and tail of the investment option and the markets where the investments are traded. The investment theory that is created by loading all these factors will increase the chances of earning huge returns besides averting the investor to invest in the investment options that do not suit him or her. Theories of Investment in Securities there are three theories that are available for the investors who would like to invest in securities to make an informed decisions and reduce the risk of their investments. Basically, the financial goal differs from one investor to another. Few of the investors come to the trading centers to take huge risks and reap a whopping profit, while few to earn money for their retirement and while others for their child's bright future. Here are a few theories that help the investors to attain their financial goals with ease. Fundamental Analysis This is a wonderful approach to trade in the stock market. Here, both the market trends and performance of each industry and firm in the market are analysed in depth. Take an example of an investment portfolio whose returns are higher than the current price in the market prior to investing you need to take various factors into consideration that actually takes a toll on the marketing conditions in the future. In case, if the risks are less than the profits, then you can go ahead and invest. However, it is vital for an investor to extensively study about the economic forecasts. In addition, it is important to study the condition of each industry where the market condition slumps down and how it affects the interest rates. The investor has to do extensive research about each industry and find out whether the stock is worth to buy or not. Basically, every investor, especially corporates, will carry out fundamental analysis prior to investing money. If you do not know how to conduct market research, there are umpteen market researchers who work for brokerage firms such as mutual and pension funds will give valuable advices to the investors either via email, newsletters or newspapers. Behaviour of an investor It is vital for you as an investor to carefully study the behaviour of the other investors rather than the companies where you would like to buy the stocks. The people who study about the investor behaviours are technological analysts. These people will study about the past investor behaviour to predict their future movements. For instance, these people take a look over the head and shoulder pattern of the stocks. Basically, in this pattern you can notice a small rise in the curve and later the curve is declined like a shoulder. Again, the curve rises and decline prior to reaching the previous low and rise again to the right shoulder. The analyst will analyse the market condition by drawing a straight line between the previous lows. This line is also called as the neckline. 
As per this theory, if the price is dropped from the shoulder to the neckline, then the stocks or securities have to be sold out immediately, since if you do not sell, the price of the stocks become worthless. There are umpteen theories which give a clear picture about how the stock prices would be in the future. Though this is not given much preference over fundamental analysis, but is opted by a few. Efficient Market Selection This approach is completely distinct to that of the other two approaches. As per the efficient market hypothesis, it was found that market affects the information. The securities prices will have a greater impact on the information. Though you try to gather an extra information, but this would be of no use since all the data are already applied. As an investor, it is important for you to choose the securities that is perfect for you based on the risk factor, cash flow and tax situation. However, efficient market hypotheses do not encourage to trade with the advices given by the analysts, but it does not stop the investors from trading with the help of analysts. These three theories of securities investments will support both the amateur and professional investors to play safe in the trading market and earn huge profits. 7 Different Controversial Investment Theories When you are planning to invest in any area, it is important for you to know about the market conditions. This helps you to make a wise investment at the right place that has less chances of risk and will help you earn a huge returns. However, when it comes to investment, there are umpteen theories available which gives a clear-cut information about the market where you have invested. These theories actually explain about the market effect based on the investor actions and behavior. Here are a few controversial investment theories that are discussed in brief. Efficient Market Hypothesis Only a few investors adhere to the efficient market hypothesis. However, the choice is up to you. If you believe in this theory, then you can follow the marketing strategies. Otherwise, you can take a detour and pick the stocks that have a potential to rise. Basically, this EMH states that the market value of shares will put all the information about the stocks. It means that the stock price would be the same until and unless the market conditions in the future changes. As the future of the market is unpredictable, so it is better to sell stocks and earn huge profits with the rise in the market price. 50% Principle As per this theory, the current market trend will undergo a slight change in the price from half to one third. It means that if the stock has roused to 20%, that it will slump down to 10% before rising again in the future. This is the rule embraced by the traders and analysts prior to buying and selling the stocks. This is the natural part of the market trend, and this kind of correction in the stock price occurs due to nervous investors who want to avoid seeing loss in the coming months. In case, if the market price has increased to 10% and slips down to 50%, then it means that the trend has failed utterly. Greater Fool Theory As per this theory, you can invest in the stocks as long as there are fools who are ready to buy the stocks at an attractive price. It means that you can make profits on already overpriced stocks if someone else is exhibiting interest in buying the stocks more than the overpriced stocks. However, if the market blisters, you would not get the fools to buy the stocks. As per this theory, investment means overlooking valuations and other data. However, investors should not totally ignore or too much depend on the data. Odd Lot Theory According to this theory, the stocks are held by the individual investors. This theory helps the investors on when to buy the stocks. Basically, this theory encourages the investors to buy the stocks when the small investor sells. However, the success of a trader and investor who are buying the stocks of the company totally depends on checking the company's fundamentals. Basically, small investors may be right and wrong. They just sell the stocks blindly. In fact, the individual investors react to the change in the market conditions more quickly over big wigs. People should buy the odd lot stocks after thoroughly analyzing the market conditions since smaller investors would take decision of selling their stocks in haste. Prospect Theory 
This theory is also called as loss aversion theory. As per this theory, every investor look loss and gain in different perspective. It means that many investors are worried about loss rather than the profits. If you are given a two options for the investors, then these people will choose the option that has less loss over the other option that will reap them huge profits. For instance, if you keep two investment options in front of an investor, where one investment option will help him reap 5% of revenue and the other investment will help him reap 12% of profits with 2.5% of loss and overall returns as 6%, the person will choose the investment option that helps them to earn 5% rather than the one that has a loss, but high profits over the other. Here, the person is just looking over the loss of the investment option, but not the profits that he or she will earn. This theory is embraced by the financial experts and investors. Though this theory gives a clear picture of what is the risk factor an investor has to take in order to earn profits, but only a very few people connect to it practically. The challenge for the financial experts is to find the investment portfolio that is riskier rather than finding the rewards. But for an investor, he wants an investment portfolio that is less risky and gives high returns. Rational Expectations Theory As per this theory, the investor wants to know what he or she can expect practically in the future from the investment made. This actually helps them to buy or sell the stocks based on what will rationally happen in the long run. This gives confidence to the investor of what he or she is going to achieve by investing now in the future. Though this theory is crucial but is a little dubious. The investor will buy a stock with the prediction that the stock will go up in the future. Basically, when the investor believes that the stock he is going to purchase is underrated and purchase it, whereas the other investors who want to buy feels the same, then the stock value is pushed up to the value that it is worth it. Though this theory explains everything but does not tell anything. Short Interest Theory As per this theory, the stock that has a short interest will go up in the future. Basically, the stock has a short interest because almost every investor is short selling it. Undeniably, the price of the stock will go up as it is shorted. The short sellers will buy the stock and sell them shortly to the buyers when the market price is increased rapidly. These are the seven controversial theories that help both the buyer and sellers of the stocks to take a right decision while buying and selling the stocks with a constant change in the market conditions. It is crucial for every investor to understand all these theories thoroughly, but factually, no theory will clearly predict the future market conditions. Popular Theories of Investment here are the seven popular theories of investment that every investor has to know prior to investing in any asset, property or stocks. The Accelerator Theory of Investment Flexible Accelerator Theory of Investment The Profits Theory of Investment Tobin Skew Theory of Investment Jorgensen's Neoclassical Theory of Investment The Financial Theory of Investment Duesenberry's Accelerator Theory of Investment Each of these theories is explained in detail below. Tobin Skew Theory of Investment This theory was proposed by the famous economist James Tobin. Basically, as per this theory, the business decision made by the firm has a huge impact on the slump or rise in the stock market value. When the firm wants to raise investment by putting their company's shares in the stock market, then the price of the shares will be based on the company's reputation and how successfully it is functioning in the market. The decision of the firm totally depends on the ratio code Tobin Q, where Q value is equal to what we get by dividing the market value of the capital stock to that of the replacement cost of capital. The market value of the capital stock is the amount that is quoted by the stock market, whereas the replacement cost of capital is the price of the today's stock. It is fact that the cost of the stock keeps on fluctuating every day. However, this Q theory explains the market value of the firm's shares to the replacement costs of its capital. Totally, the investment made would depend on whether Q is greater than 1 or lesser than 1. 
For instance, if Q is greater than 1, then the market value of the firm's share is higher than the replacement cost of its capital. Ideally, the firm can buy new capital and add new shares in the stock market. By doing this way, the firm can earn huge profits by selling the shares and can invest this profited money to expand the business. In case if Q is less than 1, then the market value of the shares is less than the replacement cost of its capital. This does not allow the firm to buy new machinery for their business until the machinery is totally deteriorated. This theory is better explained with an example. For instance, if the firm has added 10 lakh shares in the stock market where the value of each share is 10, the value of each share in the stock market is 20 and the firm needs the replacement cost of capital 2 crores, then dividing 10 lakh 20 by 2 crores would be done. If the market value of each share has increased to 40, then the Q ratio would become 2. This actually helps the business earn 2 crores profit, 4 minus 2 equals 2. If the firm reaps profit, they can issue more shares in the stock market at the rate of 40 per share. The amount collected by selling these additional shares can be used for expanding the business. As per this theory, the market value of the share increases with the increase in demand for the shares in the market, thus having a greater impact on the Q ratio. The value of Q becomes 1 if the market value and the replacement cost of capital are the same. The capital that the firm receives totally depends on the wealth of the people. The wealthier the people are, the more stocks they want to add. Moreover, People will evince interest in the shares rather than government bonds if the bond rates found to fall. The more people show interest in buying the shares, the more would be the market value of the shares, thus increasing Q ratio above unity. Suggestions This theory has umpteen suggestions. It is important for the investors to invest in the stocks of the firms based on how the firms are functioning in the stock market. It shows the current profits and also reflects the future profits that an investor can reap. The firm can expand its business if the Q ratio is higher than 1. There are a few companies who try to invest in their firms, though the Q ratio is less than 1. However, these people embrace necessary steps and economic policies that helps them reap huge profits by increasing the share value in the market. Jorgensen's Neoclassical Theory of Investment This theory was developed by Jorgensen's. This theory is totally based on the optimal capital stock. This theory was proposed from the profit maximization theory. However, this theory is based totally on many assumptions. Few of the assumptions include the firm operates in a competitive environment, no adjustment costs, the price of labour and capital are subject to change over time, the firm can borrow and lend money to the people at their interest rate, labour and capital are the same and produce the same output, the current price of stocks have a great impact on the future stock value, and the firm increases its current and future profit by mapping future values. This theory explains the investment behaviour as per the fixed business investment. The capital accumulated by the firms may change with the change in the production costs. Basically, the fixed investment made by the organisations includes machinery, buying factories, buildings, etc. However, this theory explains why there would be fluctuations in the investment and the factors that are causing the investment to fluctuate. Moreover, this theory also explains how much capital stock that the firm has to accomplish within the given time span. In fact, the investment rate is determined by the rate at which firm's capital stock is changed as per the desired level. Ideally, it would be impossible for the firms to attain the desired capital stocks when they need to buy machinery, factories and other things. So, the decision is left with the firm. The firm has to decide the pace at which the adjustment of the stocks is made to attain the set capital stock. Basically, to produce a product, the firm use both capital and labours. Before deciding the labour and capital that the firm invests to produce goods, it is not just taking the price they have to spend, but also the revenue that they generate after production of goods to the firm. As for this theory, the capital stock is determined both by MPK, 
marginal product of capital and the user cost of capital. The marginal product of capital gauges the capital to be invested for production of goods while keeping the labour and technology intact. According to the law of diminishing returns, the MPK slumps down when high capital is used for producing goods while keeping the other two factors such as labour and technology constant. The Accelerator Theory of Investment This theory was proposed by Keynes and, according to the Keynesian concept of multiples, with the increase in investment the revenue also increases by a multiple amount. However, Keynes overlooked the concept of accelerator which was later proposed by other economists. Basically, this accelerator principle is totally different to that of the multiplier principle. As per the accelerator principle, with the increase in income and consumption, the investment is also increased by a multiple amount. If the income of an individual is increased, then the consumption too increases. Consequently, it is important for the firm to produce more commodities to meet the demands of the people. For producing the commodities, the firm would require capital if the capital that was allotted to them was already used totally. Here, the investment is induced by the alternations in the income and consumption called as induced investment. The accelerator is a numerical value that gives the relationship obtained with the increase in investment and proportionally income. The total induced investment would be positive if the income increases and inducement investment is zero. To get returns, people need certain capital. Here is the equation that explains about the accelerator theory of investment. KT equals VYT. Here, K is the capital stock, V is the output and YT is the income level. When the capital output ratio is equal to YT to KT, then this ratio is assumed to be the homogeneous. To keep the capital output ratio constant, the income level has to be changed with the change in the capital stock. The Flexible Accelerator Theory or lags in investment the flexible accelerator theory keeps the drawback of the simple accelerator principle at bay by changing the capital stock without lag in time. In the flexible accelerator, there is lag in the adjustment process between the output and capital stock. This theory is widely called by another name, i.e. capital stock adjustment model. This theory was proposed by many economists such as Goodwin, Coik, Schneri and Yunaka. However, many professionals accept the theory that is proposed by Koik. Ideally, Junaka has determined the lag in the output and the capital stock. This was explained at the firm level and was taken to the aggregate level. For instance, if the demand for the output is on the rise, then to meet the demand, the firms will make best use of inventories and capital stock. Also, if the demand for output is too high for a certain time period, then the firms will increase the demand for capital stock. However, the firms may not get the ordered capital from the investors. If capital is not available in the market, then it increases the financial lag, thus the firms could not get financing to buy capital. Moreover, if the firms could not get the capital on time, they cannot deliver the goods to the clients on time thus resulting in delivery lag. The Profits Theory of Investment The Profit Theory consider profits as the ones that are undisturbed by the firms and have used it for financing investment. Basically, income, investment and profits are interlated to each other where investment totally relies on profits and profits depends on the income. This theory relates the current and past profits of the companies. Basically, if the income and profits of the firm are too high, then the earnings would be high and if the income and profits of the firm are low, then earning would be obviously less. It is important for the firms to retain the profits and use them when the capital market becomes unstable. Perhaps, when the profits are high, consequently the retained profits would be high. And when the capital is less, then the capital stock would be high. So the companies who ever earn huge profits instead of saving them in the banks or buying securities will invest in expanding the business to make huge profits. 
Conversely, if the profits of the firms are low, then they curtail the investments. As per this theory, the profits are totally current profits. It is impossible for the firms to gauge or predict their coming year's profits based on the current profits. The profits that are earned by the firm would be temporary in nature. Duzembri's Accelerator Theory of Investment This theory was proposed by Duzembri and this theory is the blend of both profits theory of investment and the accelerator theory. This theory was developed based on three assumptions. First one is that the gross investment of a firm will reduce the deprecation with the increase in capital stocks and the second assumption is that the investment will be more than savings when the income is higher. And the third assumption is that growth rate of income and capital stock are determined from the ratio of capital stock to income. For instance, if the income is $100 and the capital stock is kept constant, then the business investment is increased by an amount not much higher than the savings from an increase in the $100 income. The firm can save just $25. When an income is increased, then it has only a minuscule effect on the expenditure. Conversely, when the capital stock is increased and income is kept constant, then it has a small negative impact on capital stock. When the business capital stock is increased by $100, while income is kept constant, then the profits are reduced a little and thereby the business investment. When the business investment is decreased, then the savings are decreased accordingly. These changes will reduce the income on expenditure for a certain time span as the investment is plummeting. The Financial Theory of Investment This theory was developed by the great economist James de Zambri. This theory is called with the other name, i.e. Cost of Capital Theory of Investment. Basically, the accelerator theory will overlook the cost of capital while making an investment decision for the firm. The firms believe that the market interest rate will actually decide the cost of capital to the firm and have no relationship with the investment to be made. To be precise, limitless funds are available to the firms at the market interest rate. The firms get enough funds from the investors in the financial market. However, in actual scenario, the firms will not get the funds at the market rate of interest. If the firm needs more funds to invest in their business, then the market rate of interest will increase. With the intention to expand the business and get the investment, the firms are ready to get the funds at the interest rate that is available in the market. The funds can also be borrowed by the firms from the banks or issue new stocks in the stock market and get investors.